we want to find a few different ways of remembering that the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine of x and that the cosine of negative x is simply equal to the cosine of x. We'll look at this from a few different angles. One of them will be the graphs of the functions. We'll take a look at the unit circle and we'll see that these formulas here are just specific instances of a more general principle called odd and even functions. And we'll take a look at some symmetries of the graph so that we can recognize both these functions, these even and odd functions, and specifically cosine and sine. So let's start with a sine curve. At least I think that's a sine curve, right? Is that a sine curve? Or is that a cosine curve? Or is that none of the above, right? That would be a sine curve. That would be a cosine curve. And that would be none of the above, right? But which is which? So here's what you have to remember. For a sine curve, you need the curve to pass through the origin and the values to the right of the y-axis need to be positive values. Now I could have also drawn the axis here, but that wouldn't have been a sine curve. It does go through the origin, but the values to the right of the y-axis are not positive. That's how you know it's a sine curve. So now I can label this as a sine curve. And if you can remember that, then you get this formula for free. That the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine of x. How do you get that for free? Well, well let's just take some random point. Let's take this point, maybe. This point on the x-axis we'll label with x. And this point we'll label with negative x, right? Because this distance is the same, just one time in the positive direction, one time in the negative direction. And we take now the value of sine of x, and we see we get, in this case, the high point of the curve. Now if we take the value of sine of negative x, we get the low point of the curve, right? But the magnitude, of this distance, is the same, right? But one time it's a positive number, and one time it's a negative number, which is a way of seeing that the sine of negative x, so this value here, is just the same as the sine of x, but with the sign changed. You can also see the same thing by using the unit circle. I'll draw a radius here of this circle. Radius of the unit circle is of course 1. Now if I continue and draw a triangle and take an angle there that I'll call x, then I can compute the sine of x, which is, as always, the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And since the length of the hypotenuse is 1, I'm left with simply the length of the opposite side, which is this here. That is the sine of x. Now, what I actually want to know is the sine of negative x, right? So, I will draw a corresponding triangle here with negative x as my angle because angles measured from this side are negative and m angles measured from this side are positive, right? So the sine of negative x is of course again 
the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And since, again, the hypotenuse is simply 1, I'm left with the opposite side. And the opposite side, in this case, is this. That is the sine of negative x. Now you can see that the length of sine of x and the length of sine of negative x is the same. It's just that this is a positive number and this is a negative number. So we see again that the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine of x. Now the same thing is true of cosine that we can use the graph or the unit circle to determine this formula. So let's take a look at that. Let's say that that's our axis. Now that would be correct. If I would have put the axis here, then that would have been the sine curve, right? But we want the cosine curve. And you can tell the cosine curve by seeing that the high point of the graph crosses the y-axis. And that's the cosine curve. So if you can remember that, then you get this formula for free. Cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. So let's take some point on this graph. Let's maybe take this point. And we'll label that with an x. Then this must be negative x, right? Because that is the same distance, just in the opposite direction. So this value is cosine of x, but this value is also cosine of negative x, right? This is cosine of negative x, this is cosine of x. In both cases, we get the same value for y, right? It's the same y value. So we can see, just as an example, that this formula is correct. So we haven't derived anything strictly and formally. We haven't proved anything right but if we can remember how to draw this graph then we can see that the formula must be like this so let's take a look at the unit circle and again if i draw a radius a length one that turns into the hypotenuse of my triangle here and i have an angle x then I can compute that the cosine of x is the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And, of course, since the hypotenuse is 1, I'm left simply with the adjacent side, which is this side here. Right? So that length is the cosine of x. And, of course, what I really want to know is what the cosine of negative x is, right? Because angles measured from this direction are negative. So the cosine of negative x is, again, the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And since also this hypotenuse is equal to 1, I'm left simply with the adjacent side. And looky there. The adjacent side is the same adjacent side I had before. So the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. Now it might be interesting and or helpful to know that these formulas are just specific instances of a more general principle. If I have some formula, uh, some function x, for which this is the case, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, then that is known as an odd function. And if I have the other formula that we talked about, if I have a function g so that g of negative x is equal to g of x, then that function is called an even function. Now, these are just names, right? This could be called Fred. It could be a Fred function and that could be a Sally function.
right? There's no particular reason why we'd want to call it an odd or even. But if we look at a couple more examples of odd and even functions, then we might see that it's not a bad name. For example, x squared, let's define the function f of x to be x squared. Now if I take f of negative x, then I have negative x squared, and since two negatives multiplied together give me a positive, I'm in, I end up with x squared, right? Which is just what I had originally. Right? So we see that f of negative x <laughs> is f of x. So that doesn't work, does it? No, because that's not an odd function at all. Did I trick you? It is an even function. Right? Because we see f of negative x is simply equal to f of x. So that is an example of an even function. And now you might understand why that's the name, because we have an even exponent. It would have also worked if I would have taken the function x to the fourth or x to the sixth. And it might not then be too hard to imagine that if I defined a function g of x to be x to the third, that that would be an odd function. Right? And indeed, that is an odd function. For if I take g of negative x, then I end up with negative x to the third, which is just negative x times negative x times negative x. And if you work that out, that works out to negative x to the third, which indeed is just my function here with a negative sign in front of it. Right? So I have g of negative x is equal to negative g of x. So it turns out that this here is an odd function, as we saw here. So as we saw before, sine is an example of this characteristic, so it is an odd function, and cosine has this characteristic, so it is an even function. Not all functions are even or odd, just like not all numbers are even or odd, right? The number 1 is odd, and the number 2 is even, but what about the number 2.5, right? So, not all functions are even or odd, but those are two characteristics that functions can have. Now, how can you recognize one of these functions? You can recognize them by the type of symmetry that they have. This here is a graph of x to the third, and we just showed that this was an odd function. Now, if you imagine there being a sort of knob here that you could use to rotate this function, then you can see that any given point on that function will rotate around to end up at another point on the graph. So that we see this function is indeed symmetrical about the origin. Right? If you rotate it, you end up with the same thing. Now, this is a graph of x squared, and we saw before that this is an even function. And we can recognize an even function by imagining that the y-axis is just a mirror, because everything that happens on this side of the mirror is just a mirror image of what happens on this side. So odd functions are symmetrical around or about the origin, right, around one point, and an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis. And we saw that our example of an odd function
was sine, and our example of an even function was cosine. And now we'll go back and look at those. This is the graph of cosine, and we see if we imagine the y-axis to be a mirror, then each side is just a mirror image. So again, cosine is an even function. And if we take a look at the sine function, and we draw our knob about which we can rotate the curve, then we can see that the point we had before, sine of x, gets rotated around to the point sine of negative x. And the sine of negative x gets rotated around to the point sine of x. So this is symmetrical about the origin, because it is an odd function. So we've seen now that if you can remember how to graph these functions, then you get the formulas for free. If you know your way around the unit circle and can compute the values for sine and cosine, you also get these formulas for free. And that it might be helpful and or interesting to know that these characteristics here are just more specific instances of a more general principle, namely odd and even functions. And that you can recognize such functions by looking at the symmetries. So hopefully, now, you have a couple ways of remembering that the sine of negative x is the negative sine of x, and that the cosine of negative x is the cosine of x.